of course, when we play, think about uh, multiple instruments, um, a lot of those folks who are active in the North Carolina Bar Association think of Martin as a piano player. So Martin, it may come as a surprise that you're not playing the piano today. I'm actually playing the piano to accompany you. Tell us about switching from, uh, or maybe you did, maybe you've always played another instrument about how, about you're playing different instruments. Well, um, I started playing in the band, as others have said, uh, with the alto saxophone when I was in the fifth grade. And my fifth grade teacher, who's a woman named Ruth Mock, uh, who lives here in Raleigh and is still a dear friend of mine, brought, one day brought in the instrument that she primarily had played, which was the oboe. And uh, I was, I can only just say, entranced by it and wanted to play this instrument. And cutting through a lot of chaff, um, I played the oboe rather seriously from about age 11 until I was 22, and then decided to give it up. Um, because the oboe is, uh, to put it in the words of my current teacher, who is uh, the assistant principal oboe of the Boston Symphony, Case K. Wako, it's a pain in the neck. Um, it is a pain in the neck of an instrument, and, and the reason is this. I don't know if you can see this, but uh, this is basically two blades of grass that are uh, whittled down to, to vibrate with one another um, in, in your mouth, and you have to make this yourself. Uh, and so the amount, it's not like a violin or a piano or a, a trumpet where you just walk up to the instrument and there it is. Maybe if it's a string instrument, you tune it a little bit. There's all this time you spend in preparation trying to get this ready. And so I basically gave it up at, at, at shortly after college thinking life just is too short for this. I, I have children and a family and a law practice and, and other things to do. Um, and, and then for reasons that you don't have time for me to go into, two years ago, um, I was introduced to uh, a fellow named Joe Robinson. And if there are any Davidson graduates on this call, they might know who Joe is. But Joe Robinson is a native of Lenore, North Carolina, who was the principal oboist of the New York Philharmonic from 1978 to 2005, even though he had never been to a conservatory and had no formal training. Uh, and Joe, in retirement, moved to Chapel Hill. And we were introduced to each other by D.G. Martin. And many of you will know D.G. Uh, from North Carolina Book Watch or other places. And I became an oboe student of Joe's. Um, and uh, then was handed on by him uh, when he decided I didn't have any talent uh, to uh, a student of his who plays in the Boston Symphony. So that's my oboe story. I've been back with the oboe now for two years. So with that, um, Nick, uh, we'll get to hear uh, uh, Martin uh, play, and you'll make up your own mind as to, uh, to, to the talent he has on not only the piano, but also on the oboe. <laughs>
think we've established that uh, most of us were band geeks. Most of us were band geeks and we play, and some may have played in rock and roll bands or jazz bands or ensembles. I never played the piano in any other group. Uh, so I really don't know what it's like to be in a band um, until recently. And now I find myself uh, traveling with a group of folks that almost feels like being in a band. We had a gig last night in Moore County. We've got a gig tonight in Alamance County. And uh, they are the other candidates running for judicial office this year in North Carolina. And uh, we've kind of become our road show. Uh, and we all kind of take turns. And so I'd like to introduce them. Most of them are on the um, are on this Zoom program. I'll have them wave. And I thought about, Wade, if we were actually a bluegrass band, what instrument would we play? And uh, Ruben Young is uh, currently on the Court of Appeals, former legal counsel governor, former secretary of the Department of Public Safety and Crime Control, has a voice that James Earl Jones would be jealous of, so he would have to play the upright bass, without a doubt. Uh, also, a judge on the North Carolina Court of Appeals is Chris Brooke. Chris, if you'll wave. Chris is on the Court of Appeals, former executive director of the ACLU. Uh, he is someone I am always glad to be in the center of the stage. He will be our lead guitar player, I believe, and we are glad to have Chris uh, here on the program as well. Uh, if you've ever heard Alison Krauss play the, the fiddle uh, uh, and sing, you know when Alison Krauss opens her mouth, everyone stops and listens. Laura Cubbage, Judge Laura Cubbage of the Guilford County Superior Court is waving now. When she says something at a political forum, everyone stops and listens. So she would be our fiddle player like, um, like Alison Krauss. Now, Patricia Shields does a little bit of everything. Chris is waving now. She could be our utility player, but she's always been kind of a trendsetter like Sam Bush. Uh, she's a virtuoso like um, Chris Thiele and uh, Sierra Hall. So she's our mandolin player uh, on our band. And, um, and you know, every band's got to have a banjo player. And I guess I, that, that leaves that to me. Uh, which reminds me, Wade and I were telling banjo jokes earlier. Uh, how can you tell if there's a banjo player at your door? Well, he can't find the key. He's knocking faster and faster and speeds up, and he never knows when to come in. So <laughs> I'm a player in our, in our band of uh, judicial candidates. Oh, and let me say, we have one more candidate, because the Court of Appeals hears cases before the Supreme Court does. Maybe our band is the lead-in band for the Supremes, a sentence I never thought I would ever utter in my entire life. And we have one of the three uh, candidates the Supremes here, Judge Lucy Inman is running for the Supreme Court. Lucy, if you'll wave, and thank you for joining us. Uh, thank all of my fellow candidates. It is an honor running for you. Uh, it is a great state. I commend each and every one of them to you, and uh, it's, it's, it's really been a pleasure to get to know them and, uh, and to, and to play, be playing these gigs with them every night, and our next one's at 7 o'clock tonight in Alamance County. So thank you all for joining us. I do appreciate it. Um, Joe, you play, You normally don't play solo. You primarily play with a band, if I'm not mistaken. And whenever time I've seen you, I tell you, we'll come back to Joe. Trust me, Joe is an incredible keyboard player with his band. And now as an evidence of that, uh, Nick, if you can key up uh, Joe on the keyboard, and Joe will come back to you and ask you about your gig and just about your band in just a minute. <laughs>
Well done, Joe. Okay, Joe, you want to log off and log back in. Uh, you know, the great thing about, uh, and we're also running a few minutes behind. So uh, uh, Nick, if you'll get ready the next uh, video, you know, I, I cannot play by ear like Joe can. Um, and, I, and jazz is just completely escapes me. But what I do enjoy is finding unusual arrangements. I don't have the nearly the talent uh, that Faith does. I can't play a flaunt piece like Faith played earlier. Uh, but so I look for easier pieces, but pieces that, you know, I find have interesting arrangements, interesting harmonies, an interesting approach to a melody that's a familiar melody that I, uh, and I stumbled across this melody. It's a piece called Kingsford, which was an old English um, folk song. Uh, Ralph Vaughan Williams um, wrote it down and put it in the 1906 English hymnal. And so it's been a primarily a hymn tune, uh, even though Wade record, will recognize it. If you play it twice as fast and change a few notes, it becomes the star of the county down, which is an Irish jig. Uh, but at the speed uh, that you play as a hymn, it's a, it's a number of, uh, it's in a hymn book at several different places. So our uh, church uh, pianist played this as a postlude about a month ago, six weeks ago. And I thought, wow, that is within the range of what I can play with my limited skills. But I think it was a really interesting arrangement of a, of a melody. And those are kind of the music I gravitate to. So um, with, with apologies, I'll ask uh, Dick to cue up the, this arrangement of Kingsfold is written down by Ralph Vaughan Williams in 1906. Uh, Williams also used it as the melody for a piece that he composed called uh, Lazarus and Dives as well. So I just think it's a beautiful melody and that's why I, I'm attracted to those pieces. Now, do we have, uh, do we have Joe back? Can you hear me? We yes. can hear you. Oh, yes. Hey, I have no idea what happened. I guess I held my mouth wrong or something. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> Tell us a little bit how you got into jazz and playing jazz piano. You know, it's funny that, that I remember writing a piece in the fifth grade and there was a line probably in the encyclopedia that says that a band will play something five times, but it may only be jazz once. And I didn't know what that meant but I wanted to know. And so the more I studied, the more I started to understand that because you can be creative and you can do things your own way, I liked it because you can change it every time you do it. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. I now understand why sometimes it's jazz and sometimes it's not. Uh, but I'm fortunate that I've had the opportunity to play with some really good musicians over the years. So back to our, our discussion a minute ago, when you asked me to do this, I was a little intimidated because I don't play by myself. I play with a jazz quartet. I used to play with a big jazz band. 
and you know you kind of blend in when you do that kind of thing and when it's just you it's a little different I'll open this question up to anyone, and uh, Joe, Wade, uh, Faith, you know, we've all been busy in our careers. Um, we, uh, a lot of us have tried, have been um, trial lawyers. Um, uh, Martin's been a high level transactional attorney before becoming law school dean. How do you balance playing in a string band like Wade or in a jazz band uh, like you, Joe? Uh, the, the 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 time it takes to practice. You now, how do you strike that balance between your law practice and your um, uh, and your music? Anyone wants to jump in on that one? Wade. Well, <clears throat> music is just as important to me as law, and and I put as much of my life into music as I do uh, law. And uh, I, I sometimes, I know we all do this, I speak to young lawyer groups and I say to them, everyone should be in a band, everyone. You don't have to be a musician to be in a band. You don't have to be able to play an instrument. Just go out and buy a guitar and join a band or form one. Get your friends together and, and form a band. It's just absolutely uh, the most satisfying thing in the world to be, for example, in my case, for 50 years with dear people, wonderful, dear, good-hearted people, getting together every Wednesday night and singing. There's something so refreshing. It's like a week's vacation. So for me, the question would be, uh, how do I get law uh, into my music? Uh, the music is just as important to me as the law, and I've, I've uh, tried to do both as best I can. But that's the way I do it. I, I just uh, give myself to it entirely. I just turn myself over to the music and just sing it as hard as I can sing and, and uh, probably not very well. And people say to me, Wade, you've been singing the same three songs for 40 years. But it's, it's the act of singing rather than the act of listening. There is something magical about the act of singing that refreshes one's soul. And that for me is what music does. Faith, you said that you came back to music after being away from it. How, how does it fit into the, the balance of your having, I mean, you're a small businesswoman, you have your own firm, you're managing a business, you have employees, you have your law practice, you have your clients, but now you also have time to uh, take music lessons and, and play the music. How do you do that? So first of all, I'm just going to say it's brutal for me to have to follow up after Wade's eloquence. I found that moving. I'm enjoying so much listening to all of you not just playing, but talking about music, and it's just warming my soul. So I'm really glad, great, that I got to do this with all of you. Um, and I know exactly what you mean, Wade, by what you just said. Um, I take it really seriously also. I'm grateful that Wade said that first, because sometimes when I go over and talk, like I go over and talk to the students at the UNC Law School, because they have this employment law club, with the students there, which I think is just the sweetest thing in the world that you would have an employment law club for such a strange area of practice. And I'll talk to them and I sometimes admit to them, they'll say, tell, tell me about your typical day. And my typical day is I will wake up really early in the morning and I'll make a cup of tea and I sit down at the piano bench and I play. And it's an, two hours. If I can get it a little bit longer, I'll go a little bit longer. I have a group, I have chamber groups that I play in, and I know exactly what Wade means, this pleasure of playing with other people, the collaborative part, which pianists don't often get to do. And it's just such a great experience to be doing that in addition to the solo work. Um, but I have to make a routine. I have to do it first thing before I start doing legal work, because otherwise I'm exhausted at the end of the day. And I can't do the kind of work on the piano that I really want to be able to do. Um, I wish I could sing or make music with my body the way a singer does. 
but for me, piano, there is this really kind of resonant, vibratory, physical quality where it fills up the room and it's just this really amazing experience. So when you love it like that, if you can, if you can do it, and I think for me, having a solo practice um, lets me set that priority. Um, so that's how I do it. If I could stop practicing law, <laughs> I'm cutting back. It's been a silver lining for me in the COVID-19 that once we were forced to work from home, I moved my, all my computers, my files, everything into our dining room, which is I'm looking into our dining room just across our foyer from where I'm sitting right now. And the piano is on this side of the foyer. And so one of my campaign consultants said, you know, people be, hope, would be more interested in listening to you play the piano, even if you're not very good, than they would listening to you give a political speech. And uh, it turns out that that is actually true, as indicated by the Facebook clicks. Uh, and working from home meant that I could step away from my computer, from my email, from my brief writing, work in a contract, walk over and play for a few minutes, uh, and started making that a habit back in March. And so this has kind of been a new uh, component to my routine over the last six or seven months, which I've, I've really, really enjoyed. Uh, and again, it, uh, it's, it's connected me to you, Faith, that I had not talked to in a long time. And, uh, and, and a real treat was, again, being able to uh, play with, with Martin and on his piano, which was an absolute delight. Um, sometime when we're offline, you can ask me or Martin about his piano, but it's truly, it basically plays itself. Uh, and it's a, it's a true, uh, uh, it was a joy. So with that, uh, we'll go back to one of the duets uh, for Martin and I. <laughs> Do you want to tell, you selected that piece um, and uh, you want to talk a little bit about what we just performed and uh, we'll now pass 630. So we're, uh, what we trial lawyers call closing remarks. So uh, if you'll talk a little bit about that piece and a little bit about uh, again, how you balance music and what music means in your life, because it's obviously very important to you as well. And keep the business while you're closing remarks. Um, so um, 
That piece is by uh, Arcangelo Corelli in the 20th century by an English oboe player, Evelyn Rothwell, uh, to play with her husband, uh, Sir John Barbarella, who was a Martin, having some problems hearing you. I don't know if it's your microphone. Is this any better? Much, yes. Okay. Anyway, it's an oboe concerto by Arcangelo Corelli. Um, and Gray, if I could, I wanted to just sort of answer the question that you asked before to Faith and to Wade. Um, which is to say, and, and I, I want to, I, I'm guessing that virtually everybody on this call is a North Carolina taxpayer. And so when I say what I'm about to say, my guess is that you are probably going to call the state auditor and uh, command uh, an audit of my time as dean of the UNC Law School. But when you were asking about how do we sort, you know, sort out time for music, versus our professional careers, uh, for me, it's the other way around. Um, the music just simply has to happen if I'm going to have any hope of being any kind of a dean. Um, and uh, whether it starts at 5.30 in the morning or the oboe sitting on my desk, it's wonderful to bring in a faculty member and have the oboe sitting on the desk. It really puts them off of their uh, stride, and it's great. And so um, the chances are you might hear the oboe in the UNC Law School. You might hear it at my house. You might hear it anywhere. But there is absolute assurance that the only way I continue as dean of this law school is to be able to play the oboe. Uh, and that's sort of what Wade and Faith, I thought, both were saying. So that's, that's the answer. Thank you, Martin. Joe, um, you know, obviously, I'll let you, I'm going to turn it over to you now. And, and if you want to put a plug in for the uh, Wake uh, Bar Awards, if you're a member of the Wake County Bar um, and an attorney in Raleigh, you know that we do a variety show. Um, and um, we had a skit uh, when I was president of the Wake County Bar Association in which I ran up on stage before the performance and asked if I could be the keyboard player for the band. Uh, for the variety show. And uh, Charles Putterman, who I think was on, on this call earlier, uh, the director of the band, of course, uh, in the, it's, it is a slapstick performance, which we raised over $100,000 for legal aid. Charles gives me an audition uh, as a keyboard player uh, to see if I could uh, um, uh, take Joe's place as the keyboard the keyboardist for the band. Uh, and then Joe plays after me, and it's a pretty clear-cut decision as to who's going to stay on the keyboard, and Charles recommends I go back out and take my seat in the audience. Uh, but uh, we have a good time, um, and Joe is, does a lot of work with, the, uh, with that show. Joe, you want to give a plug for the Bar Awards and also any remarks you've got about how you balance and what mu uh, your work and your music and how, what music means to you? Absolutely. That, you know, somebody said to me a long time ago that, that music expresses emotions that you can't speak with words, that, that it gives you something. And I think that's what we heard from the other people on the panel is that it brings something to your life that you don't get anywhere else. And for me, it's, it's, it's a wholeness. It, it's the emotional component. Um, I was really lucky when I worked at w Wyrick Robbins and the, the lobby of that building, there was a baby grand piano. And you can always tell when I had a really bad day because I'd go down there for a really long time and play till I could get it out. Uh, and that's kind of what I've always done. But shout out to Lee Whitman at Wyrick Robbins because he's the one who introduced me to the Bar Awards band. And we've just, we've had a blast. I've done it for five or six years now. And the fact that we come together for one night for one performance and we're able, as you said, to raise $100,000 for legal aid. Uh, I'm proud of that. I'm proud of what we were able to do. I'm not sure what we're doing this year. It's interesting. I saw an email the other day that said we're doing a virtual show. And nobody has explained to me yet how we're going to do that. But by golly, we're going to do something because we're going to support legal aid. Thank you, Joe, for, for that work that you do with the, with the bar awards. And, and, and again, I rem, uh, at that time, Joe's office was on the fourth floor and mine was on the fifth floor of that same building. And I do remember that. <laughs> uh, Faith, any concluding remarks from you as well before we wrap it up? And you're still on mute. You missed me endorsing you. 
My concluding remarks are not only am I glad I did this, and if you can't get elected, you just have a career as an MC, but I hope everybody will vote for Grace Dyers for Court of Appeals, because I think he's going to be awesome. And I'm not just saying this because he forced me to do this, which for a week or two as I tried to relearn this piece, I was really regretting, but I'm really glad I did it now. But seriously, vote for Grace Dyers, and um, that's all I'm going to say. This is really fun. Thank you, Faith. I appreciate that very, yep. very much. And, and, and for those who will stick around, I'll talk a little bit about my campaign uh, after our last performance. Uh, but it will probably come to no surprise that we will leave our final closing argument uh, to the master himself, uh, Wade. Uh, uh, any closing remarks that you want to wrap up uh, our, um, our, before, before, I, before I get on the political stump uh, afterwards, uh, and then introduce our last piece of music tonight. Well, this has been absolutely wonderful. It's great to hear all these musicians and to see everyone who's here. One of the best musicians I know is Ray Owens. Ray Owens is here. Ray is next here. Time, next time you have one of these events, have Ray, please. He's fantastic. And there's so many other musicians here. Um, but thank you very much for doing this, uh, Gray. Thank you very much. And uh, I hope that each person here, if you're not in a band, that you'll go out tonight and call up your best friends and form a band. And while you're at it, be sure to vote for Gray Styers and tell 20 other people to do the same. So those are my concluding remarks. I appreciate that, and uh, and and Wade, I want to let you uh, bring it on home uh, with a song with North Carolina roots uh, that you are both playing the banjo on, as well as singing. So um, again, I hope you'll stick around for a few more minutes after this last performance. But I, we had to end with uh, Wade Smith singing Tom Dooley. price of admission. Uh, Wade, thank you so very much. Uh, and thank you all for joining us. Um, you know, a year ago, I had no idea I was going to be running a statewide campaign. Uh, this was the furthest thing from my mind. Uh, but, you know, it has, been, uh, it has been fun. I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed the conversations. Uh, I see on the phone uh, Carol Vaughn uh, from Austin, Texas. Hello, Carol. Uh, Carol and I had not talked in a long time, and she, she was one of my co-clerks for Judge uh, Sam J. Irvin III on the Fourth Circuit, and it was great to be able to reconnect uh, with Carol uh, and uh, have conversations with a lot of folks. You know, on one hand, it's a relief not having to 
be uh, in my car driving crisscrossing the state uh, a thousand miles a week or more, staying in hotel rooms. On the other hand, I kind of resigned myself to doing that this year. Uh, and uh, again, we're doing Zoom calls every single night. Uh, I enjoy my, my band of judicial candidates, uh, and, and we've learned to, uh, like uh, good musicians, wave one of us a step forward and do the solo while the other one step back, and then we'll jam on to the next uh, question. Uh, but, you know, folks ask me, uh, how's it going? And I said, well, you know, you never can tell. There's no template. There is no, um, uh, there's no playbook for running a campaign in a pandemic. Uh, but again, I'm enjoying the conversations. Um, it's allowed me to think about legal questions that I haven't thought about in a long time. You know, as practicing lawyers, we focus so much on our clients' issues of that day and trying to solve our clients' problems. Uh, and this has given me a chance to step by, back and think about, you know, for the first time in a while, you know, the, what is the importance of the rule of law in, in a civil society? You know, what are the role of courts? What are my views on some major constitutional issues? Uh, and how would I approach those? I'm not going to give my opinions. I'm not going to forecast how I will rule. But what is my judicial philosophy? And uh, I think at the bottom, uh, underlying uh, all, of, uh, all of this process is my commitment and belief in the absolutely necessity of having fair, impartial judges. Uh, I, in trying cases for the last 30 years, uh, I've seen great judges, uh, I've seen good judges. You know, there's been maybe some not so good judges along the way. Uh, but, you know, I wanna make sure that anyone who comes before the court gets a fair hearing, feels like that they're respected, and that we're following the law. Uh, and that's what we judges uh, should be doing. And this is a great opportunity if I'm elected to give back to North Carolina. You know, I, I went to public schools, I went to a, a fine public university law school and for business school. I think we've all benefited here in North Carolina from having a great economy uh, that uh, the groundwork was laid by uh, Terry Sanford and Governor Hunt and other leaders we've had in the state. And um, so after 30 years in the private sector, if I'm fortunate enough to be able to be elected on election day, uh, this is a way for me to give back uh, to the state uh, that's given so much to me and paying it forward. Um, there's a few folks also on the call I wanna recognize and sh uh, a special shout out to. Uh, I think this is the very first campaign event that my mother and father have been on. And I think that they're still on the line. They are. They're listening. Their their video camera is um, is uh, is off, but uh, I am glad to see them, and I hope they've enjoyed this. Also, uh, a shout out to my brother David. Um, he works for the American Symphony Orchestra League. He's an incredible musician and singer in his own right. I think he's the only one, even though we've heard some talented musicians, uh, David is the only one I think is performed on an album that has received a Grammy award. Uh, he's performed under the baton of uh, Leonard Slatkin, um, Michael Tilson Thomas as a, uh, as a vocalist uh, in the uh, or choruses for both the National Symphony and the San Francisco Symphony. And David, I'm honored to have you on this call as well. As I mentioned, my daughter Remy is on the call. And uh, last but not least, uh, I think my lovely wife Barbara is still on the call as well. And uh, let me say uh, for Barbara, uh, thank you for your support. Uh, for those, um, a few of you who were at this event, Jim and Tamara Slaughter, maybe Carol, it was 30 years ago this afternoon, uh, she uttered the words, I do, and we began this uh, incredible uh, journey together. So happy anniversary to my wife, Barbara. 30 years she has put up with me, and I appreciate that so very much. Thank you. So it is now 6.46. Uh, I will make my last pitch here. Um, uh, if you had gone to this concert, uh, how much would you have paid for tickets? Uh, we did not charge anything for you to come. Uh, so we're going to put a hat at the door, uh, so to speak, uh, on the way out. Uh, if you will, if you, for those, many of you, most of you have already made contributions to my campaign. And I thank you for that. Uh, and I really very much am, am humbled and honored by the support that you've shown me during this campaign and those of you who have contributed. 
Um, however, if you'd like to contribute again, you know, give early, give often. Um, we're going to be making some major decisions in the next few weeks as to what our budget is going to be for expenditures in September and October. Uh, so uh, I've just uh, put on the uh, chat line there my, um, uh, my campaign website. Uh, if you would be willing to make a contribution and what you would have paid for tickets for tonight's show uh, and dinner and maybe uh, some popcorn at the concession stand, that would be greatly appreciated. I asked all of my fellow participants if they would mind me ask, making that ask, and they all said that they were willing me, for me to do that. So again, if you've made a contribution, thank you so very much. Uh, I, again, I truly am honored and humbled by your support. If you haven't, and if, or if you're able and so inclined to make another contribution, I would appreciate that as well at this time. And with that uh, pitch, uh, you know, I, I, hate, I hate to bring money into uh, events like this, but it seems to be a, a necessity for running for public office. I, I hope you've had half as good a time as I have had. This has been a lot of fun. Um, it's a great seeing friends uh, and family uh, on this. Uh, my dad has now turned on his camera and he can wave to the camera perhaps here and I appreciate him me and my brother David if you'll wave as well. Thank you and uh, a lot of wonderful friends from Raleigh Moravian Church and the band, uh, friends that went to school with me growing up and uh, friends who clerked with me with Judge Irvin uh, and uh, have practiced law with me for many years. Uh, I have been, to, uh, I've had a lot of fun. Maybe we'll do this again. Uh, and again, thank you all for your time. Yeah, I know you've, uh, you've put off your dinner or uh, have put off your plans. You've got other things you could do, but I hope you've had as, a good, as good a time as I have. Thanks again. Take care. And uh, my band is getting together in 10 minutes in Alamance County for our next gig. So I better, better sign off. Good night. Stay safe. Stay strong and be kind. <laughs>